Hello. We're going to look at something that appears easy on the surface but is critical for thinking and for progress in describing something. It was Galileo that said, measure what is measurable and make measurable what is not. And so we're going to think about measuring a line to start off with. If I'm going to tell you about that line, I need to describe it in such a manner that you can visualize it without seeing it. Obviously, I can tell you it's black. That's a very qualitative term. It doesn't tell you how, uh, how dark it is, how good of a black it is. Is it black or just a dark gray? Qualitative terms are okay. Something is so big, well, so big compared to what? And that gets us to our next term, and that's the quantitative means I measure it and I give you a number. And using Gal Galileo's dictum, we can take a ruler, some standard, and say this is how I'm going to measure it. This is my meter stick. It's one meter long. It could be a step. The Egyptians used a cubit or it could be a yard. But I'll show you later on why we use a meter stick. And I put the meter stick right up here, edge to edge, and I see it's less than a meter. There's my meter mark. So I can't say it's a meter. If I did, someone would say, well, is it exactly a meter? Is it a little more than a meter? And the obvious answer is it's a little less. So the first thing we do when we measure something is take our basic unit and we divide it. You're familiar. A yard we divide into feet and inches. But a meter is a metric system and they use a little simpler system. Instead of dividing into quarters and eighths and sixteenths and three-eighths and things like that. They just divide it into a metric system, into a decimal system. So if it is a meter, the first thing I would do in measuring is, instead of saying it's less, that's a very qualitative term, is I would take a guess at that. So I'm going to put this below here, line this up, and I'm going to ask you, what fraction would you say this is? Well, what we're going to use is a decimal system where we're just going to guess that it is, and you fill in the blank here, but I'm going to give you an example. It is 0.7 meters, maybe 0.8. It definitely isn't 0.9, and it's not 0.5. It might even be 0.6. So you can take and you can make an estimate. Every measurement has an estimate. So when I record, it is... 0.6 meters or 0.7 meters, you know that that is just an estimate, that digit right there. And if you want it more accurate, what you do is get a better instrument. And in that case, I take my meter stick and I divide it into fractions by tenths. And so I've got 0.1 meter, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. It's more than 0 0.6 and more than 0.7. I've got the same problem I had a few minutes ago, and that is it's someplace between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7, and I do the same thing. I'm real sure it's more than 0 0.6 and less than 0 0.7. I need a number that is bigger than 0 0.6 and smaller than 0 0.7, and the number I'm going to choose is, is 0.64. You may say, ah, I can see that this number is a fairly solid number. I saw it on the stick, meter stick. But this number is still a guess. I always have the last digit in a number is the estimate. If I want more accuracy, meters to 0.7 meters, 
I've got 10 marks and I'm going to estimate in between here. And frankly, if I get this lined up, it appears to be just a shade past 0.64 and not near close to this. So what's the number pretty close to 0.64 but not all halfway even? And the answer is, I think, to it is much closer to 0.64 line than it is to the 0.65 line. And if I want to get more accurate, I get out a ruler that is measured in even smaller increments. This is a millimeter ruler, 0.6. And now I get out here and I can actually count here's 0 0.61, 0 0.62, 0 0.63, there's my 0.64, and finally it is just ending just at 0.65. Now there's a difference between these two, but the fact is maybe I made an error in counting this off. It would have been nice if I had a meter stick and some meter sticks are calibrated in the smaller units. Every measurement you make has an estimated digit. We also make it by estimating to tenths between the lines. So let's try a couple. I'm going to put some arrows on here and I would like you to think what this number would be. What do you estimate to this? You're going to have to estimate between these two lines and we're going to say, aha, uh -huh, it seems to be 0.14. And I'm going to put the units in since I did measure it. This is a meter, remember. We'll come back to this one. How about this one? This is point three and a number bigger than three, definitely less than five. If you uh, estimate 0 0.32 or 0 0.31, that's fine. This digit, that digit, and the rightmost digit is always an estimate. Normally students do not like to estimate. They they're, are in the mentality they've got to be right, right, right. Here we're always estimating it. And finally, this one here, it is not 0.5 and it's not 0.4. It's pretty close to 0.5, so I'm thinking it should be 0.49. Now notice that all these numbers along here have two digits, one that I measured and the other one an estimate. What about this one right here? I'm going to read it from below. It looks like it's right on the line. So it is definitely 0.3, but I need to give you another digit. If you, if you don't give me another digit, you assume that that's the estimate. It could be down here, it could be up here someplace. So I, what's the number right there on that mark? It is zero. That's one of the toughest ones to measure. In fact, another tough one to measure is this one right here. This is 0 0.00 meters because it is right on the end line there and it's not over on this side closer to close to point one. To show you how important that is that you along this scale you always have the same number of digits in this case too you're estimating between here. I'm going to put th three digits up here And I want to estimate where those are, and I'll put those in red. 0.5, and that's my estimated digit, two tenths along there, someplace around there. 0.56, 
if this uh, I imagine is the 0.55 line I'm going to put the 0.56 someplace in there and this one I told you is that tells me it's right on that line okay what would I have to do if I got um, a number like this where it has an extra digit I would have to go get a better ruler and I would put that up here and I go 0 0.6 0 0.602 here is 0 0.6 here is 0 0.61 here and 0 0.60 0.602 is barely on the side of that one and I cannot do it uh, with a, a such a um, large number of units as I have on this ruler the divisions are too big another example of looking at uh, to these digits is I read in the book that the Sun is 93 million miles away what it where is the estimated digit right there and most people look at the Sun being 93 million miles away and it's a fair distance you might think that the earth is going around the Sun in a circle we say it's circling the Sun at 93 million miles but the truth is the earth is in an ellipse which I'm over exaggerating this close distance is called the peri which is Greek for near helion which is Greek for the Sun the Apio helion the far distance is around 94.5 million miles and the close distance is around 91 times 10 to the sixth miles so the variance is in this digit right here and it's legitimate to say 93 million miles but if you want to get specific you have to mention that this is an ellipse and not circular but the average distance around 93 million miles so that is our discussion of how to make measurements of estimating a digit of reading between lines and getting an accurate ruler please to tune in to our other three videos which will be about conversion factors how to convert miles into kilometers the metric system which does feature kilometers and finally on the fourth one we'll be looking at measuring the volume of a drop of water which has some degree of uncertainty in and we can tackle it with a measurement that acknowledges and understands the estimated digit this is Dr. B at your favorite STEM Sherpa channel thank you